Welcome back to Football Daily, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we need to talk about the mess that is Barcelona. Before we get into the video, though, let's make sure you're heading into the comments right now and typing out a question for Sunday Vibes. I'm still looking for a headline topic this week. I'm not sure what we're going to be discussing yet. So let me know what you want us to discuss, what questions you want us to answer in the comments below. And whilst you're down there, hit the like button, hit subscribe. It really does help us out. It's that time of the year again, isn't it? Yep, a Barcelona manager is under major pressure. This time it's Ronald Koeman. And quite frankly, he probably deserves to be under major pressure. That's because Barcelona have been diabolically bad at the start of the season. When things you thought couldn't get any worse than being forced to let Lionel Messi leave the club, a summer of total turmoil, well, the season started. And it started horrendously. Three wins, three draws, two losses, I think, at the start of the La Liga season. Bottom of the Champions League group, there was that horrible 54 crosses game in the 1-1 draw against Granada when Gerard Piquet was brought on as a central striker. Forget, can you do it on a Tuesday night in the rain at Stoke? It's now, can you do it on a Tuesday night in the rain in Barcelona? It's just long balls. Hit it at Luke de Jong. Hit and hope. Cross and hope. Vile. And of course, this week, they got pumped by Benfica, didn't they? 3-0. So that's back-to-back 3-0 losses in their opening two Champions League group stage games. I think that's the first time they've lost their opening group stage games consecutively, of course, since the year 2000. They haven't had a shot on target in either match. No shots on target in the Champions League this season. The only club out of all 32 sides to do it is Barcelona. Jesus Christ, it's a mess. For some reason, the players still seem to be backing Kerman after the game. They're all out coming, eh, it's not Kerman's fault, it's not the coach's fault, the players got to take responsibility. It's all over the gaff. And when you start to see tweets like this from Fabrizio Romano, the writing's on the wall. Fabrizio here, Barcelona are looking for a new manager and the current plan is to change. It could take some days. I mean, hopefully Fabrizio, because if a manager's been appointed by the time this video comes out, I'm out that window. I'll be annoyed. Anyway, today I've gone through the bookies' favourites for the job and I'm going to be putting them into five different categories. You know, the we need to rank style. Great fit. An okay option would say no to the club. Poor choice. And quite frankly, a stinker. All right, let's start with the bookies' favourite, Xavi Hernandez, Barcelona legend Xavi Hernandez, one of the greatest midfielders ever to grace planet Earth, one of the greatest midfielders in the history of Barcelona, currently managing Al Saad and still heavily linked with the run. Now, he has won a league title with Al Saad. I think he won it as an invincible, actually. I don't think they lost a single game that season. He's got to a semi-final of an Asian Champions League, if my memory serves me right. No better than that. And he's kind of been playing a mixture of a 3-5-2 at times, a 3-4-3, occasionally four at the back, but generally opting for that three. The real reason he's being linked, though, forget his tactics, forget what he's done abroad as a manager. The reason he's being linked is that he's a Barcelona legend. He knows the club inside out. He's got a great connection with the board. He's got a great connection with Laporta. He's got a really good knowledge of La Masia and some of the youth candidates coming through. That's the reason he's being linked. Is that the right reason, though? It's a tough place to go right now, Barcelona. You need to get results pretty quickly and have some sort of philosophy over the long term. I think Xavi would be a risk. Would he dent his legacy by going back to Barcelona? Probably not in the eyes of the fans, but it could unravel just with that lack of experience as a coach. Not overly surprised when he rejected the job. Was it 12 months or so ago when they were linked back then, pre-Ronald Koeman? I think he'd be an okay option. I'll put him in okay option because the fans would love him. But I don't think he'd quite be the great fit another name on this list would be. Next up, and odds shortening by the hour, I'm shooting this Friday at 5.30, is Andrea Pirlo. Stinker. How's he managed to get his name in the hat? Other than being another legendary footballer over in Italy, doesn't really have the connection with Barcelona. It was an absolute catastrophe at Juventus. Obviously, they'd won every Serie A title for a decade. He joins and Inter Milan win it. Again, Antonio Conte and that incredible Inter side had a large part to play, but the philosophy wasn't there. There was no clear identity. The tactics were incredibly muddled at Juventus. Coming into a pretty much 
show at Barcelona would be a disastrous idea for Andrea Pirlo in terms of the next steps of his coaching career. And I think it would be a disastrous idea for Barcelona to hire someone with that little experience in coaching and no connection at all with Barcelona to have the fans back. What on earth is Pirlo doing on this list at those shorter odds? Next up, we've got Gallardo, of course, River Plate manager since 2014. Now, I haven't watched loads of River Plate, so I did some reading on him, did a bit of research on him. Seems like a real pragmatic figure, an incredibly gifted coach by all accounts. Does tend to prefer a possession-based philosophy, which is clearly something Barcelona fans are crying out for, and one of the reasons Kerman is not working at the club right now. But it does have that pragmatic side to him as well, willing to adapt and go to a sort of counter-attacking style. Of course, he has in the past won two Copa Libertadores. I think he's been crowned Coach of the Year in South America three times. It feels like a matter of time, right? before Gallardo comes over to Europe and shows us what he's all about. He's still only in his 40s, so he's got plenty of time as a coach. I am excited to see him come. I don't think he'll come to Barcelona. Reportedly turned the job down just 10 days ago. And if that's the case, then he's not going to have changed his mind in the last two weeks, I don't think. Look, I think he would be an okay option, but he's, well, he said no. So I've got to say, would say no, because he's literally said no. Next on the list, Brendan Rodgers. Now, I'm not saying in that tone as a slight to Brendan Rodgers, by the way, because I think he is easily the best British coach on the planet right now, doing a top job at Leicester, did a brilliant job at Celtic and did a good job at Liverpool. So tactically diverse, narrowly missed out on back-to-back -back Champions League spots, won an FA Cup. He's also been involved in some incredible recruitment at Leicester. A whole new training facility has been built. It feels like it would be impossible for any club right now to prize Brendan Rodgers out of Leicester, let alone Barcelona, who are in their own mess. I, he would say no. If Barcelona picked up the phone and said, Brendan, we need you to come in, revive, he'd go, piss off, lads. That was, I mean, I'm sorry, Brendan. Not Scottish. Another name rapidly rising up these odds, I think by the time this video comes out, he might well be favourite, to be honest with you, is Roberto Martinez. Now, Roberto Martinez is Catalan born and bred. Let's not forget that. And I think that does play a really vital role in Barcelona's fans thinking about who they want to hire. They really do enjoy someone that is Catalonian. It's part of the reason that Xavi Hernandez is so high in their thoughts. Obviously, he was an amazing player for them as well. But I think that does help a manager like Roberto Martinez, who has, by the way, done a pretty good job at Belgium. Now, he has, of course, played more of a 3-4-3, 3-5-2 kind of system for the national side. He's used those three centre-backs, quite advanced wing-backs, and then used Lukaku as a focal point, which I'm pretty sure he wouldn't do at Barcelona. I think Barcelona fans don't want to see a focal point. They want to see possession based intricate football and but Bobby Martinez you know at times we've seen that he tried to enact that at Everton I think he actually took over from Kerman when Kerman was sacked by Everton he took over which is kind of comical like could we now see Kerman sacked by Barca and Martinez taking over there I think this is very likely to be honest with you he doesn't have a great record in the transfer market go and have a look at some of his transfers I think his best by some distance is Romelu Lukaku, but some of those transfers when he was at Everton, I know it wasn't just him involved in transfers at Everton in that period, but they were whiffing. They stunk the place out. Nevertheless, I think he's probably the best candidate I've seen on this list so far, probably better than Xavi Hernandez in terms of candidacy, in my opinion. An okay option though. I don't have, if I could have him sort of 1.5 is probably where I put him, but I'm gonna stick him in that okay option category. And the reason I haven't put him in great fit is I think this next man would be a great fit. That's right, it's Eric Ten Hag. He's going to be my guy in that great fit category. I think this would be brilliant for Barcelona if they could convince Eric Ten Hag to come. Sadly, I'm not sure they're going to be able to. I think because it's mid-season, he would probably say no. If it had been at the start of the season... You never know, but I think Eric Ten Hag is pretty much perfect for what Barcelona need and want from a coach. 
Of course, he's played that sort of vertical, ticky-tacker style football at Ajax in that 4-2-3-1. He's got great links with Barcelona because of the Johan Cruyff idolising and how Ajax and Barcelona have this amazing connection. He's been a brilliant coach of youth since he's taken over at Ajax. Think of the likes of Frankie de Jong, what he would be able to produce from him in a Barcelona shirt. Pedri would be unbelievable. Ansu Fati, Araujo... My goodness, he would get some production out of this young talent. And let's not forget, this is a particularly young Barcelona squad against Benfica. They had Araujo, they had Garcia, Serginio Dest, they had Gonzalez, Javi. <laughs> Loads of them were playing against Benfica. And I think it's a necessity for whichever coach comes in needs to be able to get good production out of young players because this squad is heavily reliant on under 23s. Really heavily reliant. Obviously, he's also won silverware as well, which helps in the air division. I think it's two league titles in four years, but just plays lovely football to watch, which is so crucial for Barcelona fans and how much they like a head coach. I just think he'd be the ideal fit, really, Ten Hag. But in my head, I'm not convinced they're going to be able to get him. More likely to be Martinez. But in my opinion, it should be Ten Hag. Next up then, we've got Antonio Conte at 16-1. to 1. Of course, he's out of a job, which is probably the reason that his name is so high on this list. And he is one of the five best coaches in world football. His philosophy, though, is polar opposite to Barcelona. We're not going to see a possession-based 4-2-3-1 or 4-3-3 system from Antonio Conte that's going to get the best out of young La Masia graduates. No. It's not going to happen. He's going to come in and he probably is going to guarantee you the quickest fix of any of these managers. But is that what Barcelona need right now? A quick fix? I don't think it is. I don't think Barcelona fans would be overly happy seeing Antonio Conte come in, put all of the old boys in, Luke de Jong up top, 3-5-2, be very pragmatic, play on the counter-attack, at times play some nice possession-based football and probably win you the occasional trophy, but no real long-term vision, spend quite a large substantial amount of money. I don't think the fit is right here. I think Antonio Conte is an incredible coach, but the fit is all wrong. And that's the reason I also think he'd say no to the role. He must be thinking to himself, I can hold out here potentially and get another top job in Europe. That PSG job, I think, might become available at some stage this season. If Poch doesn't get that group together very quickly... I think that could be Conte's next role. I just don't think it's right, Barcelona and Conte. That fit is just all over the gaff. Joachim Love is in there next at 20 to 1. I mean, he's been an international manager for the last 15 years, hasn't he? He was a flop at the Euros this year. To be honest with you, the first 10 years of his reign with Germany, as good as it gets. The latter five years, I actually think he's damaged his legacy. Probably should have gone at World Cup 2014. Definitely should have gone by Euro 2016. Not for me. To bring him back to, to club football just makes little to no sense. I actually think he'd probably say no as well. I think it's just an all-round poor choice. Somehow Pep Guardiola's got on there. I think it's very safe to say he would say no. Let's not even bother discussing Pep. No. And Ralph Rangnick is also squeezed in there somehow at 30 to 1. Obviously, he's the current sporting director of Lokomotiv Moscow out in Russia. Hasn't been a manager or a coach of a club since Leipzig back in 2019, right when they finished third place. I think he would also say no. And the reason I think Rangnick would say no is maybe slightly different to these other guys is that I think he would want a more overarching vision and overarching hold over Barcelona. He would be really good at overhauling certain sporting departments, but I'm not sure whether he sees himself as a head coach anymore, whether he sees himself in that director of football level that we've seen him hold in the Red Bull group and now we're seeing him hold with Lokomotiv Moscow. It doesn't really make much sense to go back to being a head coach. I don't think he kind of encompasses more than that role and would clash with a lot of Barcelona's hierarchy and boardroom, I think, very quickly. So he would be a good choice if they wanted to overhaul the whole club, but they ain't going to overhaul the whole club. He'd say no. So that was my tier list of the next Barcelona manager or the potential candidates, according to the bookmakers. As you can see, Eric Ten Hag, I think, is the best fit, but I'm going to predict it goes to Bobby Martinez. It's not the most out there prediction, but I'm going to predict Bobby Martinez becomes the next Barcelona manager. Um, what do you guys think at home? Let me know who you think should be the next Barcelona manager in the comments below. Also, leave us a comment and a question for Sunday Vibes. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. See you later. Bye.